I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Quartet Sound Off Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shumanoff. As always, welcome by the one and only Angel Ortega. It is a loaded week, ladies and gentlemen. We got UC Vegas 51, 52, Bellator 277, Bellator 278, Bellator 279, Benz, Ugas, Fury, White, and so much more. Before we get into all the action, as always, RogueEnergy.com. If you intend for some off your order, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. It's code SOUNDOFF at checkout at RogueEnergy.com. For 10% off of all your energy needs. Last Saturday night from the UC Apex in Las, Ve- in Las Vegas, Nevada, Angel, Bilal Muhammad, remember the name, defeating Vincente Luque. Obviously, they met for a rematch of their 2016 bout last time, UC 205. It was a first round knockout for Luque. This time, it was a close fight, a competitive one, but it ends with Bilal Muhammad using the wrestling, what we thought might happen, getting the dub. And, you know, continuing his win streak, likely going to be ranked top five whenever the rankings come out tomorrow. You know, give me your thoughts on the win. Give me your thoughts on what Bill Muhammad's future may be at 170 pounds. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's looking up, right? He's, he's finally put it together. He got a win over a guy who, who put him out last time out. Man, it was, a, it was a vicious loss. I mean, that was, uh, the only loss where he's been put out in recent time. And uh, it must have felt good, man, to get that win and then get it in the fashion in which he did, which it was it was clean, man. It, it was a, you know, it, if I'm gonna be honest with you, it didn't. There were things that impressed me about it, but at the same time, I wasn't left like, holy shit, this guy's gonna be a champ. Not mm-hmm. saying he doesn't have that capability. Don't take it out of context. I'm sure people will. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, you know how it is. No, no, I, 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 I have to put it out there. You know, plus that if this shit gets clipped, I need Belial to look up the clip and then hear me say this part. So Paleo doesn't beat me up, right? I don't think he'd do that. He, he seems like a nice guy. He seems, he seems like a pretty cool dude. I think he, I think he'll be. I think he he'll be seems like a pretty fun guy. But uh, cool guy. The re, way. Re, re, regardless, though, I there was there was a uh, like the control. Yes, it was impressive. Striking was uh, not not anything special. Enough to get him through, right? Enough to to get where he needs to get. But once he gets to these guys up top, the and I thought Luke was going to be that guy for him. Which look, he made it through Luke. But I think if you put him right now against his teammate Gilbert Burns, I think that's a hard ass fight for him. I think if you put him against Tamar Usman right now, that's a hard fight. I think against Colby, I think that'd be a hard fight to get for him too. Uh, I actually give him a really good chance against Colby for some reason. Uh, but uh, I, I know you don't rate Colby that highly, Josh. So no, no, no. It's not that I don't really, I don't rate, you know, Colby that highly. It's more that I want to see Colby against a top tier. Like, I mean, if you look at his but Josh career, fought Usman twice, and he's, he's pushed him. Well, yeah, but so did Gilbert Burns, you know, and I've heard that Kamzat has been exposed now because he had a close fight with Gilbert Burns. So I apparently Colby's the only person who gets a pass for, like, it's, it's like, the most impressive thing, you know? Like, <laughs> anyway, I just want I just want to see him have a fight against another contender. I don't care if it is Hamzat, I don't care if it's Bilal, Gilbert, I want him to fight somebody. Like, I understand that, yeah, like, Maslow was top five when he fought him, but also he was 37 years old. It was a bad stylistic matchup. He coming off two back, like, back-to-back losses. Like, when, like, come on. Like, let's just be honest, you know? But, yeah, I mean, I think that, I think if we were to fight, you know, Bilal, Colby was going to fight Bilal, I think that'd be a really, really fun fight, honestly. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's actually the fight Bilal called for. He called for it a couple of different times. Golf for it in his post-fight interview, I believe, and he also went ahead and got on Twitter. He said, hey, Dana, hit my number. July, I'm ready for a five-rounder. Give me Colby. And then I think he also said, or give me Burns. Um, I'm cool with either one of those matches. Which one would you rather see? Uh, Col- uh, Colby, honestly, just because we saw good work just recently, and I know that's not going to happen. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, man, I would I would like that fight a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I mean as far as my thoughts on it, Bilal, he's an interesting guy. I'm really not sure what his peak is, peak is in the division, because quite frankly, I didn't expect him to go this far. And and based off his entire career, there's no real... He should not have gotten this far to begin with. He's 33, he's about to be 34. He was a good guy, but never really top tier. And then all of a sudden, over the last year or two, 
he just started balling out, dude. And uh, he now he's in a position where, hey, if a guy falls out of a title fight, maybe we'll give him a call. Maybe we'll get a five-rounder next. Maybe he'll fight the Covingtons or the Gilbert Burns of the world. Like, he's close, man. He's really, really close. Um, Luke is a guy, I don't think, uh, hear me out on this one, I'm not sure if you agree. Luke is a guy that's not going to take any real, he's not going to take a hit from this loss. No, like, no. Not at all. I mean, he's a guy that, I mean, obviously his record, 21, uh, 8 and 1, it doesn't look that impressive on paper, but also, like, he's a guy that mixes in well in terms of, like, he's simultaneously a contender, but also a fun fight guy that you can put in anywhere. He's, he's the most versatile of a contender guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know, if, I mean, Josh, it's not even to take anything away from Bilal, but I think if they had a, a main event spot fallout on a pay per view, I feel like if they had to choose between a Luke or Muhammad, I I think you know who they go with properly. Yeah, I mean just because I think Luke fits into more scenarios. I can see him fighting an unranked guy, fighting a top five guy, a top ten guy. He's just simultaneously extremely fun while also being a contender, which is by far the most useful thing you can. That's the most useful thing you could be in the UFC. God bless yeah. Bilal Muhammad, but like he's if if they're looking for a fun fight guy, you're not going to think of Bilal Muhammad just based off yeah. his last two fights. He he's, yeah, yeah. he's had fun fights in the past. Just whenever he's fighting at the top tier now, it's a bit, it's a little bit tougher for him, which makes sense. Yeah, and I don't think the UFC are super high on him. You know, they're, they're like there's just there's guys who the UFC for some reason aren't super high on. You know, and it's very evident. Mm-hmm. And I think this, this is one of them because there's guys they love, dude. There's guys they'll give every opportunity to. There's guys they that uh they let stay longer than they should have, right? And there's a uh, you know, there's just guys that they vibe with, and they're like, you know, something, well, you know, we'll give you a shot, you know, a la Bobby Green, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know, it, well, also, I think that kind of shows, because they went ahead and gave him Vincente Luque, who we already see him get knocked out by a couple of years ago. So, kind of feel like, I feel like you're on the right point, that they, they're not super high on him. Um. But regardless, he did get the win, by far the most important thing. So, yeah, I mean, as far as the rest of the card goes, man, so, you know, we, we previewed Myra Bruno Silva, Wu Yao Nan, in the co-main spot. Uh, they did not fight in the co-main spot. Uh, we did predict it correctly. Silva didn't pick up the win. Actually, in the co-main spot was Kyle Barallo taking on the Ga- Gazi Omar This was um, a shit show. Which was a shit show. Yeah, as was, to be quite frank, most of this card was. Um... As far as this fight, I and mean, give me your quick thoughts on it. It was a technical decision, um, one of two in the night. So go ahead and give me your thoughts on that one, I guess. I mean, I didn't know anything about these guys so much going into it. I forgot I had seen them on the Contender Series both. I think they both came off the Contender Series, if I'm right. Yeah, correct. Godzi, former Samba World Champion. I was like, shit, this this might be an easy night in the office. You know, <laughs> no hate to uh, Borala, Borala, right? So, uh yeah. Yeah, it was it was really shitty with the fouls. Uh, I think there was a usually you don't get the full five minute like break that people usually don't take it. They took the full five minutes. So someone did at one point. It was like what three stops in the fight, right? Yeah, I believe so. And then we had the it was a, a legal knee, right, against the cage mm-hmm. in the third. Yeah, which I mean it was it's just a shitty way for for the fight to go and the fouls and I didn't think the fight was bad, but it was kind of killing the vibe of it getting stopped, and obviously it has to be stopped. So I can't really hate on them for. I can't hate on the ref for making the right decisions. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, man. It, it was just a really shitty situation. Really, really killed the card for me. Which leading into the ne- leading into the main event card really had already killed my vibe then, and then the, <laughs> and then the main event happened, and then my vibe was killed even more. No, Permanently, I mean. Uh, yeah, no, it was just, especially coming off the fight that happened before this. You know, that was really mm-hmm. exciting. So yeah, it, this 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 was just a whole shit show at this point. I mean, and it wasn't the only shit show of the night. No, not even close. I mean, we'll get into some of those in a minute. I mean, yeah, I have like negative thoughts on this one. I mean, this this fight was almost a perfect in- encapsulation of the majority of the card. Now, that's not to say that there weren't you know good fights on this card. You brought up the one before Andre Fialo defeating Miguel Baeza. Hell of a fight. And I feel bad because Miguel Baez is only 29 years old, and, man, he's taken three tough losses. San Diego Ponzinibbio fight was like a fight of the year contender. The Chaos Williams one, he just he was winning, and then he got caught. And the Fiala one, he just got caught again. So rough fight yeah. there. But, dude, this co-main, I mean, this is what happens when you put two guys that are UFC de- debutants in the co-main event spot with not much experience. Um, and the technical decision part, I hate, and I hate technical decisions in general. Um, just to go down to the other one. 
So I want to bring this one up while it's still fresh. Martin Boudet defeating Chris Barnett via technical decision. Now, first of all, we hated this matchup going in because why are you taking one of the most fun fight, the mo- one of the most fun fight guys in the UFC who no- we all, we're all very well aware that Chris Barnett's not going to be a contender and that's okay. But you're like, you're, you're throwing, like, fuck him. it. <laughs> you're throwing him this absolute monster who was winning the fight, but then decides that he's just going to try and fucking lobotomize Chris Barnett in the third round with illegal elbows, which he throws like fucking five of them that you cannot tell me that they were not. He, he did not know they were not illegal. They Josh, were the most clear 12 to 6 elbows of all time. Josh, there's more significant strikes. No, so not only he throws them, he can't continue, and you're going to give the guy the win after like, I understand well, technical decision because he was winning the fight, but like, bro, you can't just, if you're winning the fight, you just want to skip to the end. You can't just like throw fucking a shit ton of illegal elbows. Like that's, that's ridiculous. What a fuck uh, you, right? Yeah, and also the issue is that technical decisions, some referees decide to do them and some of them don't. Like that's an option. Like for example, Peter Yan, Alexander Sterling could have gone to the scorecards. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll be 100% honest, I do not mind no contest. No, I have zero problem with it. I think it makes, I think it makes a lot of sense. I understand it's, if it's like... It's not a draw. It's not a loss. It's not a win. It's like that nice little middle ground. I, I, I agree. I think, unless it's like an egregious foul that like, you just know is on purpose. You know what I mean? I mean, I think it should if be it's like some Paul Horace shit, then yeah. You know yeah, that mean? should be a DQ. But if it's in the case of like, just, you know, shit happens, no contest all the way. I think this should have been a straight up DQ. Cause you can't tell me after so many of those strikes that they just, just happen to be on accident. Like I'm do- like, I'm, I'm a pretty dumb guy, but I'm not that delusional, you know? Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, that's just my opinion, but I am normally, I'm normally cool. It was a shit show and it really killed the vibe of that fight too, man. Just for it to end. I was like, really? I was like, damn, I'm not surprised for some reason. Yeah. I mean, it was just dumb, but as far as the rest of the car goes, man, uh, we did bring up Mar- Mario Bruno Silva. She picked up a win. Pat Sabatini got a nice win. Munir Lezez got a nice win. He's he back, bro. Shout out a uh, drug trafficker, Daniel Canahan. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I had some thoughts on that. I'm not going to get onto the show because I don't know the whole situation. But just hey, no, I want I want to hear your thoughts because I, I I I'm pretty sure I have the opposite opinion. So let's 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 hit it. Look, I all I know. Look, I don't know Munir's connection. He didn't. I don't think he really knew what he even said. To be honest, like I didn't. Like, he knew what he said, but I'm saying I don't think he knew this situation himself. And he's like, look, I don't know. All, I even said in the effort, he's like, look, I don't know all that. I'm like, I'm shutting him out because he helped me in my career. You know. Like, and he's, and he's like, I just stick to fighting. You know, he, he, they were really pressing him about it in the press conference, which I get, right? As a reporter, you want to push some of the hard questions. You want to ask good questions. And especially with that news coming out that day, specifically of that going on, yeah. it was a very, it was just very bad timing. Well, here's my standpoint on it. Now, if I, I get your point, but the thing that I really dislike is a lot of people got really, really pissed off. That a reporter did his job by asking, like, I, 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 I saw, I saw, I saw both ends. I, because I went on Twitter and I went on that specific post that I believe that reporter posted. Yeah. Um, uh, can't remember his name right now. Yeah. But, you know. And, uh, you know, he's a really well known guy. I can't think of him off the top. He's always there. He's always asking questions. But, uh, he, they, he asked him that question. And some people were on the very, like, you were either on one side or you were on the other side being like, Oh, good on him for, you know, you know, asking the, the hard questions and doing his job. And then it was the complete opposite end of like, why is he pushing it so hard? Which I did kind of get that vibe when he was asking the question sometimes, but I, I, I respected his commitment for, for wanting to get an answer. Mm. At the same time, I felt like, at least to me, I feel like Munir gave his answer, you know, like, and he even said like, yeah, that's, that's it. And then he's like, I, uh, any other question? He's like, nope, I just want to ask you about this. And he was like, that's fine. And then let's continue. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which I thought was like a good response at him when you're too. And the reporter kept that same energy. So I got, you know, it, it, it kind of like, I mean, it, it evened out. I mean, I don't think there was anything bad or egregious in, on, other, on either side, you know, as far as how they handled it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I get... Um... I get the point that people were like, he should stop pushing, but also Munir wasn't really answering the question. He kept on, cause he was asking about his relation, like, why are you shouting out? Like, you know, not really shouting out, but he was asking his relation and so on and so forth. 
He said he helped him in his career. Like, he, he helped him early on in his career. Whatever that may be, who fucking knows, man. I ain't making no assumptions. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe, I, I should probably, I didn't, I haven't watched the clip since, what, Saturday night. Pro- probably should do that before, actually. Speaking about it, but regardless, um, yeah, man. I understand I, why he asked the questions. I also understand why Munir gave his answer that he did, because also you can't really say much about a guy that is part of the mob. And yeah, part of the mafia. Now I don't feel bad it, for him. It know? is a very, it, it's a very smart thing that he didn't answer with a lot of information because literally the FBI is seeking information. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and I also think this is a difference because that's a lot of people, and I want to bring this up because I saw a lot of people comparing like, why don't people ask Hamzat about Hamzat Kajirov? Did you see this talk? You know, and look, I'm not going to say that's a fully valid point because because I know there's some stuff there. But it's different between a guy is literally being searched for, you know? I think it's it's a very, very different situation. Because, like, I saw people like, why why is this guy going after, you know, Munir Laziz, but he's not going after Hamza Chamaib? I'm like, man, he, like, does, is Munir Laziz even in Dublin? I don't think he is, right? No, he fights, I think, out of, like, Dubai or some shit. Like, he's out there in, like... <laughs> Like out there, I don't know. But I I wanted, yeah, I just, but there's I a lot of, so. but but I know what that guy, that particular guy, has spent a lot of time in that area over there. Yeah. So. But my my reason for bringing it up is because Hamza Chamaev and his family live in Chechnya. Like, if you don't live, if you don't go by Hamza and Kajirov's, and this is why I don't give anybody who gives shit, who gets shit for like associating with, them, is if you don't associate with them, your family's gonna die. Like if the guy's a literal, he has death camps where he sends fucking gay people and anybody Ooh. who protests against it. Like, he's a literal war criminal terrorist piece of shit. Man, I don't know all this So it's a little bit you're, different. You're, you're, you're speaking for yourself, Josh. Just, you know, no, no, no. I'm, I absolutely am speaking for myself. Josh I'm is like, literally... no, I'm speaking for you too, motherfucker. No, I mean, that's... No, now, you guys heard this. Angel Ortega agreed with everything that I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, that's this is verifiable shit. Like, this is literally what's been happening. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, that's just... It's a different situation than the Kinahan one. Because Kinahan's a part of the mob, and I understand... If you're associated with them, I, I don't want to say that you're choosing to do it of your own volition, but you more than likely are. In the case of Hamza and Kudrov, if you don't associate with them, you're going to die, and so is your family. So it's a little bit different than the Hamza case, which I see a lot of people like, why are they not talking about this, but they're talking about, you know, Kinahan? Different, different situation. Just That's my thoughts on it. And like I said, I don't know the whole Kinahan situation. I don't even know what all his crimes are. Um, yeah. He's just a, he's a, like a mafia guy, drug trafficker, uh, execution shit, like, just general mob shit, you know? General mob shit. Right. There you go. So, um, not anyway. not not supporting it. No, I think we. I did think just, we had to tackle that. Just need to make that clear. Here. You know, I don't want anything to get taken out of context here. Yeah, and I I did want to just tackle that because it, well, it is a very big, it's a big subject, you know. Um, Especially considering the, the U.S. just did all those sanctions, and now you know Bob Arum, who is associated with him, can't can't talk with him, and a bunch of other guys. So, um, and Kinahan's super involved in the boxing and MMA and all that stuff. So, um, I feel like we had to kind of address that. But, uh, anyways, Devin Clark moving on down the card. Devin Clark defeating uh, Thick William William Knight at heavyweight. Is this the uh, move? Huh? Is this the move? For which guy? For Devin Clark? No, I don't think so. I think Devin Clark's probably going down. To like heavyweight, I think I didn't think he looked good though. I was happy for him, dude. He had some rough times. That's what I'm saying. Maybe heavyweight, maybe another heavyweight battle wouldn't be bad. Maybe it wouldn't be bad. Yo, uh, Thick William though, you got to move on. You got to move down to light heavyweight, bro. It's the uh, middleweight. Fuck it, just get rid of the pants. Big, big Will, man, you got to move on down. Now, he's five ten, fucking two fifty eight in that fight. Didn't, I wouldn't suggest it, man. Two hundred fifty eight pounds. I think so. I think so. Uh, he could. I may be off. Though I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's so, he weighed he weighed in two fifty plus. I I know for sure. No, you're uh, absolutely right. So. You're absolutely right. Yeah, man. Uh, good one for Devin Clark. Um, as far as the card, PNA and Zad defeating Lena Landsberg. Lena Landsberg, dude, she comes to. I enjoyed that fight a lot. Like the, Lena Landsberg comes to swing and bang and throw elbows, bro. Like I, I'm always entertained. Uh, PNA and Zad. Uh, I'm a fan of her, but we kind of know her level at this point. I do have hope that eventually she may move on to contender status, but after her fight with Raquel, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I'm sorry to that, she's on a nice ass run, dude. Like, you go look up her record, she's awesome. One fight since November 2019, it was Raquel, who's on her own awesome run. So, um, dude, your car closed back for the first time, uh, since 2020, and he beat the dog shit. Was it 2020? I thought it was 2019. Um, you know, he fought, he fought, uh, Bilal 
in uh, UC 248, the, the last car before COVID. No, no, he bought Benio in 2020. Oh, not Bull. Shit, I meant Benio. My bad. Um, fucking idiot, Josh. Because it's the Volvo Hummer car, dude. I was like, no, I'm memeing you, memeing you. I was looking on, you, you, I'm looking on Wiki, man. I'm sorry. Fuck. Uh, anyways, uh, um, good Byron, win though. Yeah. Dracar Cole is, dude. You know, did you read about how badly that shove fucked him up? Oh, uh, like that fight? No, no, the shove from Jeremy Stevens. No, oh, at the way end, I completely fucking forgot about that. Holy fuck, no. Yeah, he, like, he got a lot of, like, his neck was really fucked up, and, like, he had a concussion, and it was really, really bad. That's what happens when you fucking dehydrate yourself and fucking push someone at the And then, yeah, end. exactly. Um, That's why Jeremy Seamus got cut, dude. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, that and, like, six-plus losses, you know, like, six sure. straight losses, I mean. Um, definitely didn't help either. Anyway, uh, moving on down, uh, your boy Jordan Levitt. Back in the win calm, split decision win, 26 years old. Uh, and didn't he twerk after he won? I don't know all what he did, but let's go, Chip. I believe I believe he twerked. And bro, I love anytime Jordan Leva wins because like you get a lot of repressed dudes on Twitter getting really upset about it because they're finding and out a lot of stuff about themselves. We're finding out a lot about themselves, but also like, dude, like, what are you gonna do? Jordan Leva could fuck you up. Like, what are you like? Try and stop him. Like, <laughs> fuck you up bad too. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he he's uh, what is this? Three in one. Three and one in the UC, four and one. That's solid, yeah. man. Solid, very, very good. Ten and one now. Only loss with the Claudia Puelles, and that was a little really close fight. So shout out Jordan Levitt. Uh, Sam Hughes getting her first win in the UC and opening up the car was highly interesting, defeating Kevin Kroom, who's had some rough, rough times recently. That one ended um, so quick, dude. I didn't even get time to watch it. As I pulled it up, uh, Sam Hughes was ending, and we went into Jordan Levitt. I was like, what the fuck uh, happened? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, man, this is an all right card, but um, it happened. So let's we'll just go ahead and move on from that one. It was it was, uh, it, was a, it was a rough one, man. It was I a mean. rough one, yeah. Um. Anyways, let's hope this weekend's card better. I uh, I actually I have a lot of faith in it being significantly better. Just my personal opinion. UC Vegas sixty two going again down from UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. We left the Apex for like a solid two three weeks, and they're like, all right, guys, it's gonna fuck back in there. Um. In the main event, women's strawweight Amanda Limos. Taking on Jessica Andrade, yes, the former champion is back at 115 pounds for the first time since 2019. Damn, it's uh, been that long. Actually, excuse me, 2020. Forgot she fought Rose at, uh, on Fight Island. So Damn, since, it's still been 20. that long? Yeah, it's been two years. Um, Holy shit, I feel old. And she's taking on Amanda Limos, who is a solid prospect. Showed a lot of punching power, seven wins via knockout on a nice win streak. Oh, she debuted with a loss to Leslie Smith, uh, but she was younger then. That fight took place all the way back in 2017. Since then, she's been fucking some girls up, bro. She is coming off a split decision win over Angela Hill last December. I like this fight a lot. I think it's a little bit weird as a main event, but give me your thoughts on this one and who you got. This feels oddly soon to me. I don't know if you feel the same way. For Amanda Dumas? Yeah. yeah. I agree, um, but I also think it makes sense also because Jessica Andrade has not fought down in 115, so it makes sense from that from that lens. But I do Ooh. think they're pushing her a bit soon. But also, you got to remember, dude, she is 34. That's she's, also true. So she's getting up. She this is her moment. You know, hey man, women last though in MMA. They do, and we also went over it recently. 115 is a deceptively old division. It's stacked. It is. It's a, it, dude, it's one of the best divisions of the UFC, but it is a somewhat old division. Older than what people think. I mean, we have Jessica Panetta in the rankings, Josh. I mean, that's how you know it's old. Well, I mean, Jay, don't, don't, don't throw shade at my girl, right? Jessica Panetta, the go. I'm not. But I'm no, but saying. she is, low, yo, she, yo, she's, she's good though. She's that's 39. Right. Jesus Christ. Forgot God, how old she is. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, dude, I forget that's... because she, t- she had, she took four years off, but yeah. Yeah, that, that was a thing too. But no, dude, the thing is, it's, uh, I don't know if you're just kind of trying to feel like they could have thrown her back in with like a shit dude. I, I don't even know. Even like an Amanda, like a Mackenzie Dern type, Marina Rodriguez. Like shit. I, I don't think they would have wanted to do a Whaley rematch, but even that was potentially an option, you know? Mm. Both lost to the champ. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I felt like, but I guess they just wanted to give her a different look. I mean, I guess she's beat some of the other people below her. I mean, I guess it, I guess it makes sense. It, it's weird. I feel like it should it make sense, but it does. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I'm down for it now. I don't know, man. I, I feel weird about it. 
You know, I also think it's a little bit weird, just because I understand that Amanda Lemos needs to take a step up. You know, she's she's ranked number 10. She's 34 years old. She's only going to get older, and she's actually turning 35 next month, too. So, I mean, she's quickly approaching that age. But at the same time, it's like, does this win do anything for Sagan and Josh at all at 115? Like, Absolutely anything? Not. I mean, she's a former champion. She she probably should be fighting somebody's top five anyway, but this division's in a weird place, so I guess I, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't, you know? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm conflicted about it. As far as the fight itself, though, um, who you got in this battle of Brazilians? I mean, it's a tough one. I can see Amanda Lima. I don't think, fuck, I'm picking Amanda Lima. That's really upset. Mm. Falling out. Bold pick. She's a, she's a slight underdog, by the way. She is, and uh, it'll be it'll be a fun fight regardless. Um, she's shown that she has a lot of punching power, which she'll probably need to keep Jessica Andrade off of her. Um, I am going to go ahead and take the, you know, the more proven, more proven the fighter. Form, I'm going to take former champ, <laughs> former champion. I'm going to go ahead and take her. So, yeah, that, that's where I'm at on it. I mean, but also I can see it going the other way. I'm not. I'm not like firm on this pick whatsoever. I think Amanda, Amanda Limos is fucking good. Like, I think she's really good. Ever since she beat Montserrat Ruiz, I'm like, she's got some skills, man. Like, she's got a lot of punching power if you're not careful. Uh, I do think there's a gone judge, though. I think she has the chin to take it, and I think she's going to be all right. Eventually, she's, her chin's going to get cracked. I thought it happened with, with the Wei Lee fight, but since then, she's been fine, so I don't know. For now, um, gosh. Now. Hey, Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up losing this one, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take Jessica on Josh here. I think she's going to take her into deep waters, and I think she can pull off the dub. Um, heavyweight co-main event, and it's one that I actually like a lot. Uh, oh, Tanner Bozer. Huh? Is this it? Because I saw a different one on uh, Topology, so that's my What did you say on top of, Topology? Uh, I kid you not, Clay Guida versus Claudia Paulus. Oh my god, I swear to god, if we have this shit again, we're, the, it's not <laughs> set. Hold on, let me check the UC's website, because I was looking at Wikipedia. Check Wikipedia, check UC website, check Google, check everything, Josh, while we're on Oh, here. my God, dude. Get, oh, wait, but hold on. Let no, no, no. Check, I clicked the wrong card. It's going to be Macy Barber, Montana De La Rosa on fucking there, or Sue Montagieri versus Manel Cape, I'm calling it. Okay, okay, no, 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 we're good. UC's website and Wikipedia have the same thing. Okay, let's so, go. So, on, uh, in, in the Coleman event, uh, Tanner Bozer was originally set to face Rodrigo Nascimento, which, you know, that would have been a good matchup. That was fitting. Instead... He's now facing the hottest guy in the division, the undefeated 15-0 Alexander Romanov. Tremendous wrestler. I mean, there is a suspect one in there, though, this period. But, well, yeah. I mean, we know the one wants to be no. But regardless, this is a, I like this fight a lot. Tanner Bozer is coming, coming off a nice knockout winner Owen St. Pru, Ovin St. Pru. He's essentially the gatekeeper to the top 15. If you can beat him, you're probably in the top 15. If you can't beat him, you're not making it in the top 15. So, you know, winner here probably gets ranked. Who do you got in this one? I mean, Alexander Romanov was honestly deserving of a ranked opponent, like just in the top 15, if I'm being quite honest with you. Uh, with that record, some of the wins he has, I mean, it's it seemed like he was due for a top 15 guy. I agree. Uh, definitely not Tanner Bruce, but I guess the opportunity was there, so, you know. He did decide to take it on short notice. It's, it's his, you know, he didn't need to take his fight, but he just wanted to get in, get in there and get some He just wanted to get in there and get paid. Hey, man, for Tanner Rose, I mean, it's a good one, man. If he beats him, he's right up there. I mean, next fight's a ranked opponent, you know, I'd say. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So so good for Tanner Bozer. Uh, this is a tough one, man. I think Bozer could, like, he is deceptively quick, dude. Like, you look at him, you wouldn't think he's a quick guy. His hands yeah. are quick, has good combinations. He's tight with his stand-up. Uh, very hard to finish. Very, fin- very hard to get out of there. At least at what we've seen in the UFC. I, I know he has a few losses outside of the UFC. I don't know if any of those were, were losses where he got finished or choked out or anything. Uh, I don't think we've seen him on the ground really. So if this fight hits the ground, uh, did he go to the ground ever with Latifi when they did fight? Like, did he have a lot of trouble there? I can't remember that fight. I can't moment. remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, I'm curious to see how he does on the ground if Romanov is able to get him to the ground or once he does get him to the ground. See how those challenges oppose. This is a tough fight for Tanner Bozer. He's a really tough dude. dude. He, he he's he's really just barely short of breaking in, but he needs to get that extra little push and make it in there. And I mean, Romanov would be a big big W for him, man. He, I mean, if he really wants to make it, I think he has to do it here. 
Look, I'm going to go with the series pick of Romanov. He is coming on short notice, so that could play a factor, but I wouldn't be surprised if I saw our boy Tanner Professor pull it out here. Super fun guy, really competitive, fast hands. I could see him, you know, turning a few heads here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I understand, and I really want to pick our boy. I really want to pick Tanner Boza, man. I like this kid a lot. I still think he does have potential because he's very quick. I mean, he has some of the fastest hands in the division. He's had a lot of nice fights. Like, we know that he's not going to be a top 10 guy, I don't think. Uh, we've seen crazy things happen, but look, man, I like the guy a lot. I am going to take Alexander Romanov here. But who knows, man? Bozer might catch him. He might catch him, you know. Um, I would not be surprised. I really want to take the upset, but I just don't feel confident enough to do so. So I'm going to go and take Romanov here. I think this Moldovian is a fucking monster. And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I think he, he should have already gotten a ranked guy, but regardless, he'll he'll probably take the win over Tanner Bozer this weekend. Rest of the card, my man, uh, what are some of the other fights you want to go ahead and talk about? I mean, you know, we always got a shout-out. Clay Guida, man, still doing the damn thing, taking on a young guy in Claudio Paulus. Uh, dude. Clay Guida, man, 40 years old, that 40-year-old fucking boomer, dude. He's still fucking here. You love to see it, man. Uh, Dude, he did that grappling thing at, like, a fucking, like, a month ago. Like, not a month ago. Holy fuck. Four months ago in uh, December. Mm. Uh, the Fury Pro grappling thing against Billy Quarantilo, against Billy oh. Q. Yeah. Like, he's, like, active all around, man. He's, he's doing He's doing grappling matches. He's... He's doing his matches in MMA. He he is just a guy who just fucking loves competing, dude. And nothing's gonna stop him, dude. I I don't know what his goal is. I don't know what his goal is. I don't know. I don't think he's, has he ever talked about like retirement in recent time, Josh? Like has it even been like a fucking? No, not, not to my knowledge. I haven't heard anything. No. Like at, at least with like guys like Jim Miller, he said like a date. You know, like this is what he wants to get to. So we're like, okay, that might happen, right? Might not. <laughs> but uh. With Clay Guida, there's been, like, no word of, like, oh, you know, it's going to happen probably on this day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or around this time. Clay Guida is now 40 and has given us no shine of wanting to retire yet. And it's not looking bad either. Yeah. Uh, for a 40-year-old, a pretty fucking good cast tank. Uh, his fight against Leonardo Santos was a fucking banger. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> He's hard to finish, man. I mean, you're, I mean, uh, a lot, uh, you know, some submissions in recent time, but like putting him out is fucking hard, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna have a tough time finishing Clay Guida, especially a young fighter. I mean, unless you're like that next guy, probably, or or just like this fucking athletic stud with a with also a good just rounded game, you're probably not gonna get Clay Guida out of there. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I agree, and dude. Look, Claudio Poelles is very good, 25 years young. He did beat our boy Jordan Levitt, the only person to defeat the goat Jordan Levitt. Uh, he also submitted Chris Gritzmacher. He's also pretty good in his own right. Dude, if Clay Guida, I mean, 40-year-old Hall of Famer, still so good, dude. I mean, it makes me happy that he's still around in the game, you know, honestly. Um, yeah, it should be a really fun fight. I'll put it like that. Clay Guida's never in a boring fight, ex- except for that really, really weird one back in the day, I think, against Gray Manor. That was really, really weird. Outside of that, he's never in a boring fight. Uh, shout out Gray Manor. <laughs> yeah, shout out Gray Manor. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, never in a boring fight. This one should be another fun one. Dude, this is by far the best, okay, not the best fight on the card. This is going to be the most entertaining fight on the card. Yes. Lando Venata taking on Charles Jordan. I forgot that Lando went down to 145. They just want to feed us, don't they? They're feeding us this, Josh. They know this they're making up. Near the identical record, 12-5-2, and 12-4-1. and one. Um, Both of these guys come to swang and bang. Charles Jordan last fight against Andre Ewell Udel- looked like a fucking man possessed. Like he did. He fought like a man possessed. Um, neither one of these guys is going to fight for a title. Uh, probably not. I guess Charles is only 26. He's quite young. Neither, but neither one of these guys are ranked either. But I'll be goddamn if they're not two of the most entertaining guys in the UFC, dude. I mean, this is going to be such a banger. Um, they're both coming on nice wins as well. So let's go. That's going to be most. That's the easy pick for fight of the night. However, it's far from the only good fight on this card. You know, Macy Barber's back against Montana De La Rosa. Uh, this is kind of a weird matchmaking, at least to me personally. Um, I'm, I'm assuming Macy Barber gave up on like the thing about being like you know a super young champion. 
Um, I thought her, I, she should be on a three fight losing streak. Um, and she's taking on Montana De La Rosa, who I feel like, I think she should be fighting people better than this, but, you know, Montana is coming off a win, I guess. So, um, you know, good for her. Good for them. It should be a fun fight. I still think Macy Barber is at the very least entertaining. Uh, Angel, I'm not, this may be, I'm assuming you're on the same page with this. So, if Lana Bonata or Charles Rodin is the most entertaining fight on the card, Sue Matajiri and Manila Cape is not far behind. This fight's going to be an It could be. Fight. It could be. If our, Manila, if our boy Manila Cape starts throwing. No, absolutely. And I think he will. I mean, he's coming off back-to-back knockout wins. I think he's, I think he's settled in. I think maybe the UFC jitters maybe got to him in his first fight or two. But dude, he's, he's here. He's ready to go, you know? And two Jerry is a very good guy in his own right. Only 26 years old and, uh, looking better each time he's out there. It's going to be an absolute banger, dude. Absolutely amazing fight. Um, I mean, look, dude, prelims, Jordan Wright, Mark Andre, Barry Oltz, that should be fun. Jordan Wright's always fun. Uh, here's an interesting thing. I'm not sure if you follow this one. Do you remember Tyson Pedro? Angel. Yes. Tyson Pedro, at one point, was looked at as one of the greatest prospects in the UFC. I believe he was coming out of the same gym as Ty Tuivasa. Um, super, like, high-profile guy. And uh, started with wins over Khalil Roundtree and Paul Craig. Like, that's how... That's how good he was, how highly he was viewed. Um, and then he came out some rough times. He lost to Ilya Latifi. He did get up, uh, he did get a win over Sparbrack Safarov. But then he lost to OSP in a fight that he, you know, he rocked him badly. And then he ended up getting submitted out of nowhere. And then he got hurt and lost via injury to Shogun Hua in a fight that he absolutely should have won, you know? He's not fought since December 2018 and he's back. Maybe four years off, taking on the 38 year old. Ike Villanueva, who is not very good, but, and I'm honestly really, really surprised that he's still in the UFC, but, um, he does come to swing and bang, so that should be fun at the very least, you know? But yeah, man, I think the only, the only real last fight that I personally want to bring up, uh, Dean Barry, uh, out of Ireland, is making his UFC debut 4-1, 29 years old. I'm not sure what they see in this kid, because I've watched him a couple times, and he is, he's, Somewhat okay striking, but on the mat, he's essentially kind of lost. Obviously, he's 4-1. and one. His loss was to Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor back in 2018 at Bama. Um, he's taking on Mike The Truth Jackson, former, literally, friend of the show. Normally, make that joke. Um, but friend of the show, Mike The Truth Jackson, back for the first time since 2018. Um, yeah, man, any thoughts on this matchup? <laughs> I mean, it's fun to see Mike Jackson back, man. It's it's nice to have someone we've had on the show. Uh, not it seems like that was forever ago too. Honestly, when was that, Josh? That seems like it was a while back, but it really wasn't. He was supposed to fight him um, a year ago, right? A year ago, and we had him on around a year ago, I believe. But then because of like, I guess there was like some visa issues, and so this fight ended up getting postponed and kept on getting postponed and so on and so forth. But now they're ready to go. They're they're going to do the damn thing. That we fucking hope, man. I mean, they haven't. Well, really yeah, yet. I mean, they haven't gotten in the cage yet, so you never know. But like, I mean, it's just... well, not even that, Josh. They haven't weighed in. COVID protocol. I mean, you know, there's a lot going on. I feel like, you, I mean, I feel like you you got a feeling something bad's gonna happen, Angel. I don't have a feeling anything bad's gonna happen. I'm just saying we're not there yet, Josh. We've seen how many fights have fallen out. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I can't argue with that. Um, but yeah, man, we had him on the show a long time ago. I mean, I can look it up real quickly. We had him on. All the way back in January 2020. Oh, it was right at the start of the year. Holy shit. Right at the start of the year. 21, excuse me. January 2021. Um, yeah. A year, a year and three months. Cause he was supposed to fight him January, uh, yeah, January 20th of 2021. We interviewed him 10 days before. So, before that fight was going on. But yeah, they're finally going to go ahead and fight. Um, yeah, man. Shout out Mike. Still doing the damn thing. 37 oh. years old. Back for the first time since uh, 2018. That fight which he beat CM Punk in. So, which got uh, a no is a no contest. Man. They hit him with a no contest. They hit well, they hit her boy with a no contest. That sucked. But he used a uh, very dangerous, <laughs> terrifying. He might have killed Punk in there. No, know? no, no, Josh. They got him for a very dangerous performance enhancing weapon. <laughs> what the is ganja? It? The ganja. 
the Devil's Big Lettuce, guy. you know, the, really went ahead and did a really, number on him. He really did a number on him. Made him made him knock out CM Punk with one punch. It was it was terrifying, you know. Um, but yeah, shout out Mike being back. That should be fun. Uh, and they are opening up the card. So, yeah, interesting fight there. O one in one versus four and one. So you don't see that often in the UFC. So, anyways, um, yeah, man, I like this card a lot. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I like it a lot more than last week. So I just hope that this one's actually cool. I, you I have expectations, close- Josh. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep measured expectations at the last week, but you know, I'm really hoping this card's good. I'm really hoping. Uh, but yeah, man. So not only you see this week, we actually have a shit ton of Bellator. Like, I mean, a lot of Bellator. There's two Bellator cards this week, and we have to recap last week. So we're gonna go ahead and start last Friday night from the SAP Center in San Jose, California. Bellator 277. Um, obviously headlined. By the rematch. Patricio Pitbull versus AJ McKee. Now, this fight was interesting on paper because it kind of, you know, I, we rarely see this sort of thing, right? Like a lot of the times when there's such a definitive ending to a first fight, we don't get a rematch. You know what I mean? Like, and there's a lot of what ifs that come from that. You know what I mean? Like whenever, what happened if Ben Ashton didn't get knocked out five seconds in against Jorge Oswald? You know what I mean? What if Connor didn't knock out Aldo? And 13 seconds, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. We never get those yeah. questions answered. Because he would have knocked them out in 10 seconds, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> regardless, um, but reg- my, point, my point being, whenever you see like, such a lopsided first fight, we don't get rematches too often, and we especially don't get them immediately. We did get an immediate rematch in this case. And, dude, Patricio Pitbull gutting it out, man. Unanimous decision victory. Very controversial, I should add. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, defeating AJ McKee, getting him his first loss of his career. And, uh, 49, 46, 48, 47, 48, 47. He does it with the light kicks. He does it by being patient. He controlled the center of the cage. He controlled the rules of engagement and he gets the dub. Angel, give me this, give me your thoughts on this one. And also, give me your thoughts on the result itself. Did you think that Patricio did enough to get the belt back? Uh, I thought, I thought it was close. I think he did win the fight. Uh, it was a very unimpressive performance on both sides, if I'm being quite honest, Josh. I don't think either guy impressed me a lot going into this fight. Obviously, last time around, it was a very quick finish. It was very sudden. Sudden. He cut him off. He caught him early on. It was a, it was a complete opposite of that. Obviously, it was drawn out. It was long. It was a, you know, he had, they, they both had to be safe, right? And, uh, like you said, he, uh, uh, Pitbull, he controlled the rules of engagement. Like you said, he, uh, he really dictated this fight, man. He uh, yeah. he chose where it went and how and where and how it got there. And he had he had AJ in some danger too. What was it, the the third round? He had him in a uh, yeah, I believe the guillotine. Guillotine. Uh, but AJ was able to hold out. It was he. he I, I mean, according to him, it didn't seem like it was close at all. But you know, obviously, uh, we're not him, so we'll never know, right? Uh, it could have been a lot of a lot closer than what we thought in reality. Uh, how he was feeling in comparison to what we what, what we saw visually. But, uh, yeah, man, it, 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 it wasn't anything impressive. Uh, it seems like AJ's gonna go up to 155, Josh, and they, they, we're not gonna get the trilogy here. Which, I mean, it, it's fine, it's whatever. But, uh, it, it feels like there's some unfinished business here, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I agree. It wasn't I like a, a trilogy. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a really fulfilling. I didn't feel like either guy was, like, fully satisfied, you know? And, and, no, and, uh, I mean, his look, dude, like, this. Now McKee got, thought he got robbed, and I think no. Yeah, chance. that I, dude, that, that was I, the first time I've ever seen a guy appalled. Like now we get some guys like, what? I won that fight, like you know, yeah, won, yeah, like you know. Yeah, but you could tell there's like a bit of like, ah, there's no, yeah, actually so think that right, but he makes it seem like he does. AJ a hundred percent thought that he won that fight. Yeah, and especially considering he thought he got robbed too. Which, by the way, dude, like. In the corner, they were telling him, oh, yeah, you're up four rounds. I think we started going into the fifth. Oh, uh, like, Josh, don't even what? say his corner. Tell him his dad. That's his who it dad. Is. Yeah, I'm like, dude, Antonio McKee, legend of the game, OG. Bro, what fight are you watching, my man? Don't like, lie to your like, son. Like, I understand. Give it, I, look, all this straight up, dude, I, I actually scored for AJ, but it wasn't, like, it, nothing impressive. I gave him one, round one, four, and five. The only round I thought that was clear in that was five. I thought every – you can make a case. There's only two clear rounds in this fight. I think it was round three was a clear Patricio. Round five was a clear McKee. That was it. 
if you want to give any of those other rounds to somebody else, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I saw a lot of people shitting on Big John because Big John said, like, he, he scored the fight 4-1 for McKee. Um, which, by the way, I'm not one to defend Big John, as we've seen, like, on last week's show. Like, I don't, I don't agree with him. He wasn't wrong about last week. He was wrong about last week. That's okay. He was. Um, anyway, so, dude, like, people don't realize you can have a fight and 4-1, but all five rounds are close. Dude, like, someone, I don't, I forgot what fight it was, but someone referenced Cosmon. I think it was this one. I was like, dude, I can't believe people are still going about this. About Hamzad being, dude, oh, cause Hamzad robbed Cuba Burns? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. People, dude, people don't understand what the fuck they're watching. I, so, I, anyway, so Big John said they scored this fight 4-1. I'm like, man, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, but like, I could see how you can, I could see how you come to that scorecard. You know what I mean? Cause everything but five and three were clear. Like, if you want to give Patricio only round three, I, I wouldn't, but I can, I can, if I squint my eyes, I can see it came to that decision, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can have a scorecard end 4-1, but every single round's closed. Like, that's, that's fine, you know? Um, I had McKee winning, but it wasn't like some clear, like, I, I don't care, you know what I mean? When I saw it go to PC, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Cause neither one of these guys went out there and like, they didn't give a definitive reason to score the five for you know what I mean? Like, both guys, like, Patricio controlled the rules of engagement. He did what was safe, and he landed the leg kicks. He went ahead and controlled the cage, and so on and so forth. He, he did walked what him down, to too. He did, he did, but he didn't land much of substance outside of the third round. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, both guys were really a lot. They were extremely safe, and uh, it just worked out in Patricio's case. He got the decision, uh, which I don't, I, like I said, I'm not going to complain about. So, um, yeah, man, on the bright side, we're probably going to get a trilogy out of this, which Belter will very rarely do you have these situations where, like, you get these two ultra-good fighters fighting multiple times. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm very excited for a trilogy fight. Hopefully we'll get it. But AJ McKee, his status as Belter is still a little bit up in the air because of the whole, you know, he uh, wants the only fight for a million dollars, which we'll see what happens there. Yeah, not going <laughs> to happen now, man. Yeah, not going to happen now. Anyways, um, co-main event, dude. Here's the thing. I'll actually be straight up. I to Angel, I said, we said this in the green room, but um, Bellator really got shit on for the main and the co-main, which is out of the control. Granted, it feels like this sort of thing happens to Bellator quite a lot. I'm not sure like what Indian burial ground that their headquarters is built on, but you know, I actually enjoy Bellator a lot more than I enjoyed USC. But this co-main event, dude, ending in the worst um, way imaginable. Obviously, it was the finals of the Bellator Light Heavyweight Grand Prix. Uh, third round, it was, it was a close fight. I think I had a one run going into the third, third round. Corey Anderson started to take over, started landing some ground and pound, got the takedown. Granted, you know, Vadim Nemkov got a, got up a couple times, but round three, we're coming to a close. He's trying to land some ground and pound. He headbutts, um, Vadim Nemkov. With that headbutt, he opens him up. Fight gets stopped. Five seconds away. From the fourth round, and after the fourth round in that state in California, I believe they can go to a technical decision. So, Angel, there were almost three technical decisions this weekend. So, um, that's crazy. yeah, man, that is crazy. So, anyways, uh, give me your thoughts on the fight. I mean, there's not a whole lot we can really say here, but I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was gonna be a banger, man, and uh, then I'm getting, oh shit, and it being a <laughs> shitty ending, man. Like again, man, uh, it's just unfortunate, obviously. Uh, completely accidental, right? You know, not on purpose by any means, but fuck, man. I was so excited for this fight. You know, 205 is so stacked. Like, it's just so good. And then that happens, man. It was just really just a, a bitter ending. Mm-hmm. No, nothing sweet about it. Just bitter. No, no, nothing nothing sweet about it. Uh, Corey Anderson saying that he is now the Bellator Lightweight Champion. And even, uh, I think, Ali put something up about it. Like, he, he put up a mock graphic of... Of course, you know, like, like after a promotion, you see both of both of this, it'll be like winner, and it'll show like the the person's like name and their face on the graphic or whatever. I saw yeah. Ali made his own for Corey, and I thought it was really really funny. Um, I mean, this is a close fight, dude. I feel like, I, like I said, I had a one one going into the third. I thought round, one, but I thought the first two rounds were very very close. And that's kind of what sucks about it because this fight was really really entertaining up until the headbutt. You know what it I mean? Was com- it was um, competitive. <clears throat> so. You know, Corey's saying that he's the champion. I understand he yeah, kind of has to do that because it's like men- championship mentality and all that. But fucking man, play the heel, right? Yeah, if you think you're going to go in there and, and curb stop Vadim Nemkov, man, in the rematch, you gotta you gotta chill out, man. That was a close fight going into the third. Um, mm-hmm. 
obviously it was turning for him a little bit there, but fuck man, we we didn't know we don't know what happens in the fourth or fifth. Exactly, it was a close fight. I mean, we've seen guys, you know, have close fights. With, you know, the first three rounds of that Phil Davis rematch, close rounds four and five, but even them Carl just came on, put it on him. So <laughs> and <Glicus. laughs> huh? Him and Anglicus too, wasn't it? Yeah, like, there you go. Close, yeah. He's a bit of a slow starter, but even then, I still gave him round one. I thought round two was close. Round three was turning, but it was a close fight. It was competitive, and I hope to see the rematch very soon. So yeah, we'll sure. see what happens. I mean, um, I get it, man. No, no one likes a quick finisher. True. Um, as far as the rest of the card, give me your go ahead and give me your takes on some of the undercard fights. Uh, fuck, man. I mean, we got. I mentioned it last week, Aaron Pico. I mean, granted, though, for a guy coming in on short notice, I mean, that's that's what kind of things. I mean, he put a fucking strike on Kamek on his opponent. Uh, can't remember his name off the top of my head. Lee Edwards. Lee Edwards, yeah. He put a fucking clinic on that kid, man, and he battered him up. He, he made him all bloody, man, and, you know, Aaron Pico's looking scary, man. He's putting it all together, like you said, and we said this every time, man. Every time we see Aaron Pico, he's just getting better, and he's only, what, 25, 26? Like, this kid is on a fucking tear. He is a fucking menace. Pitbull has another young kid that he has to keep his eye on on his way up. Yeah, and this, I mean, god damn, dude, this is such, look, I think I said it on Twitter, I was like, if there's somebody that I, this may be controversial, but if I had to take one person from Bellator and just drop them in the USC, it would be Aaron Pico. This kid is 25 years old. He is, Angel, he's just now hitting his prime. He may not even, even be in his prime. Yet. Only 25. And he's out here murking dudes, dude. His boxing... His wrestling, and that's the thing, like, for a long time there, like, he couldn't really find the middle ground, you know what I mean? Like, he would strike, but he would get caught, and his wrestling sometimes would come off his force, because he got, he, he wasn't, he was getting caught, you know, he didn't really know how to counter it too well, he didn't know how to disguise and take down, so on and so forth. His current run, dude, he's worked it out perfectly. There's a reason why he's ranked number four. Adley Edwards is super tough, I saw, I saw people saying, like, oh, he crushed another can, like, dude, what do you want out of this kid? By the way, Adley Edwards came in with a fucking good record coming into this CFC, CFFC veteran. Like, he was a, uh, he probably won't be fighting for Bell's title anytime soon, but it's not some can, dude. Like, he didn't have a bad good. record. Yeah, and he was tough as hell. Like, to quote Jim Ross, he was tougher than a two dollar stick, bro. Like, they, he was, he was a tough kid in there. Um, he just goes to show the level of Aaron Pico, though. Yeah, like, he's, to beat a guy so with that good. kind of record. Yeah, and I mean, he was up 30 24, excuse me. Uh, 2016. It would have been 30 24. He would have got another 10 8 round. I had to go on a school card. He was up. He had two 10 8 rounds by all judges going into the third round. That's, That's how good he is. That was devastating. <laughs> and by the way, let me just say this. As a man who loves seeing some body work, seeing some body shots, Aaron Pico is the best in the game. I don't give a fuck. You can't name another person who lands, who puts more work into the body, dude, than Aaron Pico. Not a single person. Um, it's just ruthless, dude. Like, he throws them like he's throwing from the ground, dude. Like, he puts so much power into them. Um, yeah, man, I love I love me some Aaron Pico. <laughs> it's like I a really Ford do. Escalade going at full speed, Josh. Honestly. And Jack Hammer getting slapped over the head, hitting the ground. <laughs> I mean, dude, he's a monster. He's a monster. I'm, I'm super high on this kid. I remember whenever he came out, and, like, he had so, so, like, he was four and three. He had a lot of rough times. Even during that stretch, like, he nearly knocked out Henry Corrales, you know. He knocked out Leandro Higo, who's still very, very good. But, like, it just shows he was so young, and now he's at a position where, like, damn, dude. Like, he's he's putting it all together, man. He's a monster. So can't wait to see what he does in the future. Patricio Pitbull, man. AJ McKee, they got to be watching that kid on the undercard and be like, ooh, he could be a problem someday, man. Um, but speaking of a problem, Angel, you know who's the problem? The Swarm. Linton Vassell. Oh my goodness, dude. He he was in danger. <laughs> yeah, man, but yo, four straight wins. He said he wants the Fedor fight. Do you think it happens? Hey, they should make it. It makes sense. It does. And you know what? He said he wants it. They're looking, like, apparently Scott Cooker said he's looking to do that fight in July. They originally would do the Red Square in Russia, which... I was just saying, isn't that in Russia? Interesting. Yes, that was the original plan. Before the Ukraine thing, Like, just Google the Red Square if you guys have not seen it. They're going to do it outside the Red Square, which would have been, Same. like, holy shit. That would have been epic, like, in all time. Like, if he, depending on if he won or not, like... Would that be Fedor's retirement fight? Like a That would be. His next like, fight's going to be his retirement fight. No, yeah. no, no title now, essentially. Correct. I mean, that's fine, man. I, I don't give a fuck. I mean, this guy has a beautiful record, especially at heavyweight. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Regardless, man, I, I think that the cell fight makes sense, but I don't know if, if Bells wants to do that. I mean, granted, they, they did throw him Tim Johnson. I don't think anybody liked that at the time either, and it ended up awesome. So it's, it's okay, dude. Ryan Bader doesn't want these fans. He doesn't. He doesn't. He, they, he knows. He <laughs> knows. No, I'm fucking around. Uh, but yeah, man, overall, um, you know, fun main card. As far as the prelims, I don't think there's a whole lot to really say. Kyle Kretschmer, who I pointed out on the show multiple times, did pick up a nice win. Uh, Rafael Cavallo came back. We talked about it last week. He had some struggles. Uh, cause he was fighting top level guys. He just seemed to throw him another top level guy. Our boy Yags gets, I believe this is his first win in Bellator, right? Uh, officially, yes. Yeah, cause he, he lost the uh, Albuquerque, I believe. Uh, and then he also lost to Corey Anson. So our boy Yags getting on this, getting on the scoreboard, bro. Knocking him out in the second round. Love to see it. He's uh, a good Tyler, fighter, man. He is very, very good. And I think it was a situation came in on, I believe, like, um, not short notice, but it was like, he was kind of like, there was his first Bellator fight with Corey and maybe some cage jitters, who knows. But dude, he looked good in this one. He looked good. He's still a very, very good guy. Um, and Shakur's fighting for the title now. So in height, it's not like a terrible loss. No, it's not bad at all. It's not. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, Tyrell Fortune got a nice solid win. Overall, I like this card a lot. Was there any of the fights that I may have missed that you want to talk about? Uh, off the top of my head, no. I mean, we highlighted all the main ones that I think matter and are relevant. All right, sounds good, sounds good. And moving on, guys, is that one Bellator card? There's two Bellator cards this weekend. Uh, this one on the 22nd, Friday, from the Neil S. Blasdell Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. Main events, Juliana Bas- Velasca is taking on Liz Carmouche for the Bellator Women's Flyweight Championship. Obviously, Velasquez kind of, she kind of came more into the spotlight, uh, back in 2020, upsetting Lima Lane McFarlane, but she she was undefeated going into that, but I don't think anybody expected her to win that fight in the fashion that she did. She did make a split decision victory over Denise Keelholtz in July of last year to defend the title. Seeing on Liz Carmouche, who obviously, you know, I still think her USC release was bullshit, but she did get released in USC after her title fight with Valentina Shachenko, who just came in. Three straight wins in Bellator, two of them being finishes, and she's in a position where she's challenging for the title. Give me your thoughts on this one. Uh, this is a banger, man. I think this is a fun main, uh, main event here with the ladies. Obviously, they kick off the, the Bellator weekend for, call it what it really is, right? And, uh, sadly, you know, they had a, they, they had a fight fall out of this card, so it kind of made this card, in my opinion, not as good as it could have been, but no, no hate on the people who want it, right? But, yeah. It was a little bit better when they had a, Hill and uh, Barzola on it originally as well, and the co-main. But shit, you know, shit happens, and now we're here. Mm. You know, that's how it goes. Yeah. Uh, but for Juliana Velasquez, man, I think she's in for a good one. Uh, we, we are giving predictions for these, right? Yeah, correct. Man, dude, uh, for Liz Carmouche, for her sake, man, I hope she's not having, uh, you know, uh, any flashbacks to another uh, former, you know, Olympian uh, <laughs> judo player you know and uh juliana velasquez uh she's pretty good at judo dude i've heard uh that's what i've heard yeah i mean that's what i've heard and i mean look maybe she doesn't you know maybe she's not she's not a heavy submission person when it comes to it when now that she's transitioned to, to fighting but she's been getting you know and that denise key holds about you saw her dude she was more comfortable on her feet she was throwing a bit against the striker against the girl who her thing is to strike you know especially yeah. a girl especially a girl from that region i mean that's uh that's something tough to do, and I gotta give her respect, man. I mean, it was a close fight, if I remember right. That one didn't come. That one did come for some controversy. I didn't have an issue. I didn't have an issue with it. But uh, I mean, for this conversation, I mean, she looked solid in her last three night. I mean, massive finish in her last one. If she's on Velasquez, though, I don't know if it's gonna be an easy night for her. Dude. I think she's gonna have a tough mm-hmm. time with her, uh, especially this girl's getting more comfortable on her feet, and obviously, her fucking bread and butter, her judo. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tough night. It is. And, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that you're going to go ahead and take Velasquez to retain. Um, same page. I think it's going to be a rough night for Liz Carmouche. Now, it's not to say that, you know, I still think she's probably one of the better people in this division. She's 38 years old. I was actually really impressed with the last one of Rakana Watson be, but uh, I'm going to go and take Velasquez to retain. But, uh, yeah, man, Coma event here. Now, I mean, there is two Bellator cards this weekend. This one is by far the weaker of the two. Um, but, you know, that's that's okay. 
Um, uh, Nikita Makarilov taking on uh, Enrique Barzola. This is another one of their uh, wild card qualifiers for the Bantamweight uh, World Grand Prix. Obviously, Enrique Barzola, we kind of store with him, former UFC veteran, uh, quite competent too, but he left his debut in Beltor earlier this year. He scored a nice knock on one of our Darren Caldwell. If you don't know what Nikita Makarilov uh Somewhat of an unknown, not really unknown, because he's been in Bellator since 2021, I believe. Um, but solid record, 8-1, and one, uh, former Fight Nights global guy, and uh, only 23 years old. So go ahead and give me your take on this fight. This is a weird one, man, because Barcelo, obviously, like you said, he, pretty recent release, pretty good guy. I felt like they could have given him some other opportunities or more another another chance. It's not like he had done bad. Not not a big finish guy. But uh, Russian kid, complete I mean, not complete unknown, but I, we don't know a lot about him. You know, In terms of like, you know, co- relative to the other guys in this tournament, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a complete mystery. I mean, he comes out of that uh, that Fedor team, uh, Jim, dude. So and he has to be good, right? I mean, I, I mean, all those guys in that gym are killers, right? I mean, you know, Victor Nemkov, Anatoly Tokov. I mean, we don't we don't have to name them all, but you know them. You know what I mean? Yeah, great gym, great gym. Also, all guys super competitive, and you know those guys are pushing themselves, pushing each other each day in the gym. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on him, I think, for his gym, him representing his gym at this tournament, him in his weight class. Uh, he's so young too, Josh. He's 23 years old. I mean, I. I I think we gotta go with the with the known here, Barzola. I, I don't have it. I, I don't know anything about this Nikita kid, but wouldn't be surprised if he came out here and gave us a surprise. Mm-hmm. So I actually know a little bit about this Nikita kid. Um, obviously we know that he comes out of the great gym. We know that he has a good record. This kid, I, I don't. Okay, we know that how good Barzola is. He's the clear guy to pick here. I'm gonna take the kid, bro. I am. This kid has been fighting since he was, fuck, 18, younger than 18. He debuted in 2015. He's only 23 now. Somebody do the math on that. Okay. Um, you got it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This kid's been fighting for a long time. He's just now hitting his peak. He's not even hitting his peak yet, but he comes out of a great gym. He, he had a really nice win over Blaine Shutt earlier this year, um, who is a former CES veteran, CFFC guy. He's improving fight to fight. I went ahead and watched some tape on him earlier, like literally yesterday, because I saw him in the co-main spot. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Like, yeah, like, um, but yeah, I'm gonna pull him for the upset, dude. I I actually am. Um, no real reason, just a go- I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about this kid. Uh, this is not the only like w- a low qualifier fight on this. They also have Jordan L. Lugo, Danny Sabatello fighting below this, uh, but we're not gonna get perched for those. As far as the rest of the card uh, that's happening on Friday, is there are there other names you want to go and shout out any of the fights you want to talk about? Uh, there is one guy I need to shout out, Josh. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but go ahead. Uh, is Tufuk Mus- Musayev? Musayev? Fuck yeah, it is. Dude, uh, former 155 champion in Ryzen. Coming off a loss, though, to Roberto de Souza, though, triangle choke. Big jiu-jitsu guy. Kind of had to get his hands in the mix. Big jiu-jitsu player still. Finally kind of put it together. Was able to get a win over the champ, and uh, yeah, man. Uh, sadly, they they rematched. Uh, it didn't work out for him, but that's did they rematch? I might be thinking of a different. I'm thinking. Did I mess it up? I thought they rematched. My bad. For some reason, I thought they had rematched. Had it fought in the past, but for Richard Souza, obviously caught him. Things happened, man. Thirty-two years old, coming into Bellator, getting this big opportunity for him. Uh, obviously, leaving Ryzen. Ryzen losing a lot of big stars. Yeah, I'm gonna wonder. No, I was gonna hit, but uh, he's a big finisher, man. He beat Pitbull when they did their little crossover thing. That's the current champ right now, man. I yep. mean, just one win, two wins, and he's. I mean, you gotta give this guy a title shot, right? He's right there, yeah. Are you there, my guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You cut off for a second. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, he's right there. If he wins this one, or if he wins a couple of fights, he's right there because he already beat Patricky, but. Um, I think we all kind of know, no disrespect to Patricky, you kind of feel like, I mean, that, 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 that belt is like a lifetime accomplishment belt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oof, Josh. I'm saying, I mean, look, dude, there's a, re- like, come He's on. fighting your ass now, Josh. He, and I'm sure he'll beat my ass. And I actually like Patricky a lot. Like, you know, like, Patricio is kind of like a really, 
he's an angry little guy. You know what I mean? He he's like angry I've never little seen, guy. He, I've he's never such seen, a small man with so much anger. Uh, I mean, jokes aside, Patricio is always talking shit. He always seems very very angry. Patricio's actually a really really nice guy. I always seem very upbeat, very positive. Um, no boring fights ever. Always comes with swing and bang. So I'm a big fan of Patricio. So I'm happy that he got the belt. But dude, I mean, th- I mean, he got the title shot after two, after two straight losses. Like, and he <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was against Peter Quilly. Like, there was n- that that title shot made very little sense. And oh, Josh. Peter, Peter Quilly could have been champ, Josh. Not, I mean, he didn't even get close, but yeah, I, I see your point. He could have been champ. He, he put disrespect to Peter Quilly, dude. Anyways, really excited for Tafik to be in Bellator. Y'all, Harry, y'all are hating on the on the Irish Canelo. The Irish Canelo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's fucking comedy. Shout, but yo, shout out Peter Quilly, though. Love that man. Um, anyways, is, yo, I'm guessing at Peter Quilly right now, bro. Give me dude, some I love it. I love it. Um. Anyways, by far the better of the card is Bellator 279. Um, this card also took a hit. Sergio Pettis was supposed to be in the tournament, but he had to pull out. Um, so Juan Archuleta took his place. But anyways, so in the co- excuse me, we'll start off with the main event. I mean, let's be honest. Let's just let's just get this one out of the way. Uh, Chris Cyborg. I want to start off with the co-main, but we might as well just give his prediction immediately. Uh, so Chris Cyborg is going to win this weekend. Just taking on Arlene Blenko. Um, these two fought once before back in October 2020. It's been literally a year and a half. That fight wasn't even close. Um, and Arlene Blenko getting the title shot because there's really nobody left for Chris Cyborg. So, you know, the Cats and Ghana fight did not come together for whatever reason. We've heard allegations from both sides that, you know, Cyborg didn't want testing and Cyborg said, and excuse me, Zingano said that Cyborg didn't want testing. And Cyborg said that, um, you know, Zingano is scared. So there you go. Regardless, this fight's in the co-main event. So Cyborg's going to win this weekend, right? Like, there, there's no chance of a upset here? Yeah, I'm on the page. Just to make sure we're on the same page. I, want to, I just want to make sure that you say it. Actually, Joe. <laughs> Arlene Blenko is eight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Arlene like, Blenko is about to fuck up Chris Cyborg. <laughs> I wonder what the betting odds are on this fight because there's no way that she's like time to bet my a... life savings on Arlene. Oh, yeah. I'm I would... looking for them. <laughs> I can't find dude. They literally don't pop up. Holy fuck! On they usually have them on fucking Tapology. They're non-existent right now. Jeez. Okay, so I looked up fight odds. Uh, apparently, a lot of places haven't even posted a line for this, which is always a great sign. Which, um, which means it's fucking ridiculous. Exactly, but the one line that I have been able to find was from from Bovada. Uh, Cyborg is a minus eighteen hundred. Holy shit! So you need to put down one thousand eight hundred dollars to go ahead and get a hundred back. So and, and what about uh Arlene is a plus eight hundred. So that's hey, that's some solid money right there. Yeah, if she wins, but we know she this fight is like by far. Look, dude. Josh, I'm betting Bellator, 500. I, I, easy I, fucking dude, win. Bellator has done some weird matchmaking decisions over time. This has got to be up there. I mean, I understand that, like... I'm about to make four four grand, Josh. Just do wait. You're going to bet everything you have on Cyborg? No, I'm Blanco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Um, wait till I see you next time, Josh. Wait till I see you next time, Angel. Wait till I see you next time. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you all the money that I that I have because you bet on Arlene Blanco. It'll be well fucking worth it too, dude. Let me fucking tell you. Um. Anyway, man. So, moving on out of the co-main event, this fight is much much better. It's going to be for the interim Bellator bantamweight world title. Juan Archuleta stepping in on short notice, but still we know the story with man. This man. This man is a beast. Um. I was a former featherweight, and you know he's kind of bounced around in weight classes. He did lose to Sergio Pettis. That's a Pettis got the belt in May 2021. Um, and he's also lost to Patricio Pitbull. Those are his only losses in Bellator. That's it. Outside of that, he's beaten Patchy Mix, Henry Corrales, Eduardo Dantes. Uh, he's beaten some nice names. Former King of the Cage champion. Excuse me. He's a former, um, I believe, three weight King of the Cage champion. So yeah, dude's a monster. Um, and he's going to be stepping into short notice to fight Rufon Stott. And look, dude, I remember whenever we talked about this Grand Prix at the start, I think I might have said Rufon Stott was the guy to beat. 
Um, he's undefeated in Bellator, coming off a win over Magomed Magomedov, and uh, he's defeated Josh Hill as well. He's 17 and one with his one loss was a 15 second flash knockout to Marab Davalashvili back in 2017. Uh, he's a former uh, two time NCAA Division II champion, ranked number three. I like this fight a lot, my man. Hit me with it. Who do you got in the co-main event here? I got Stotts, man. I think he's going to get that shit done, dude. I really do. I mean, dude, when Corey Sanhagen was getting ready for his uh, Piotr Young fight, one of the guys he brought in was Stotts. Mm-hmm. There's the reason he brought in Stotts. It's because he's a fucking beast angel. Yes. A beast of a wrestler. Yeah. And, man, um, and I mean, you saw how good that fucking Sanhagen fight was against uh, Young, and I mean... You've seen the performances fucking Stotts has put up in his last two fights. I mean, the guy, he's the guy to beat. I mean, out-wrestling Magomed, Magomedov, that's impressive, bro. That's really impressive. That fight was a banger, dude. And, um, yeah, man, Rufon Stotts, like I said, months ago, even whenever he was fighting Pettis, I was like, you know, he's the man to beat. And I still think he's the man to beat. He's my favorite in this tournament. I'm going to go and take him and beat Juan Chalette to become the interim champion. Um and essentially, from there, he quite literally will become, you know, the man to beat. So, I mean, if you want to get the title, you got to beat him. you got to go through him. The interim so, yeah. title. Yeah, the interim title. Anyways, so, um, yeah, man, very, very excited for that fight. As far as the rest of the card, I know there's obviously the, the clear ones, but what are some of the other fights you're looking to talk about? I mean, Josh, uh, Kyoji Horiguchi, Patchy Minx, I mean, it's right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we gotta talk about it. It's it's a part of the 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 Grand Prix as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, correct. I mean, I, I'm a little, honestly a little bit confused as to why that fight didn't have the uh, the interim title on the line. I feel like that kind of made a bit more sense, but I guess they just didn't want to take that st- that opportunity from Rufon Stotts. I'm assuming. Probably, I don't know, dude. This is another banger right here, Patchy Mixer Yoruchi. I mean, that's another really competitive fight off the bat. I mean, all the fights. Are close. I don't think there's a, I don't think anybody walks for anybody in this Grand Prix. Mm. I think all these guys can beat that guy, that guy, on that guy, on that given night. This guy can beat this guy on this given night. This guy can beat that guy on given night. That applies to all these guys. It's super competitive, bro. I feel like in other Grand Prix they've had, they could have said, this guy can beat this guy, this guy can beat this guy, this guy can't beat that guy. Mm. Here, this guy, any guy here can beat the other guys. I agree. And it was more interesting when her pedophis was in there, but dude, um, I still like this this Grand Prix a lot. Even with all the hits that it's taken, you dude, know. Dude, we need some double elimination, dude. I want to, I want a losers bracket run out of someone, dude. <laughs> I love this shit. Yeah, um, let's hope this one goes better than the light heavyweight one. But um, they're off to a bad start, but I, I do think it'll be still very, very. I think it'll be awesome, dude. I, I, I have high hopes for this one. As far as the fight this weekend, dude. Rufon Stotts, and I and this is not an official pick. It won't go against our record, but dude, I think Koji's gonna go out there. And I think he's gonna prove a point against Patchy Mix. And I like Patchy a lot, but I think he's gonna go out there and prove a point against that man. He's gonna make a statement, isn't he? I think he is. I really think he is. Um, but regardless, man, as far as the rest of the card goes, I mean, the Lee McFarlane is back against Justine Kish. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't give a lean. Maybe it was her choice. Maybe she just want to take off something. I don't know. But regardless, I'm surprised she did not get an immediate. Uh, rematch, like, uh, upon her return. Um, cause she was champion for what, like, three years, four years? Like, a while, bro. So I'm surprised that she didn't get an immediate rematch, but she's gonna be taking on, uh, former UFC veteran Justine Kish. So, um, this is kind of a layup for her, too. I mean, you know, Justine Kish has won, like, one fight in the last five years. Um, she actually lost her Bellator debut to Deanna Bennett. So, um, kind of, kind of a layup, but Alimale has been out for damn near two years, so it makes sense from from that, you know, that attribute. So, um, wow, why so long? What happened? I don't know. I, I actually, I don't know why. I think maybe she had, I believe she had uh, knee surgery. That's what she had. Ah, it's always the damn knee. <laughs> it is. So as far as the undercard fights, there's a couple of really, really good ones. What are the ones you're looking to talk about? I like the prelims. Oh man, bro, you know I was gonna set out my boy Lance Gibson Jr. Son of Lance Gibson Sr. I always gotta give some love. Uh, and my, one of my favorite fighters outside of UFC, Goichi Yamamuchi at 170 officially, man. Uh, having some the trouble making, having some trouble making 155, uh, 
and uh, we finally make the move. And then uh, one more, Josh. Uh, Yancy Medeiros versus Emmanuel Sanchez. This is a sleeper fight. I won 55. Yeah. I'll, this dude, this fight's going to be a banger, dude. I'm very happy that they signed Yancy. And it was apparently just an easy process. I, I believe he, like, tweeted at Bellator. He's like, hey, I want to get on that Hawaii card. And they're just like, fuck yeah, bro. And that was essentially it. <laughs> that's that's fucking awesome. I hope he's getting paid. Or... Yeah, it's it's pretty dope, dude. Um. Yeah, and, and dude, Emmanuel Sanchez always comes to bang. I, you know, he slowed down a little bit, I thought, in his current losing streak. Um, but maybe, you know, he, he's 31, but he's an old 31. I mean, he's been fighting for 11 years. So, and he's had a lot of wars, man. A whole lot of wars. So, maybe, maybe 155. Back to huh? Maybe 155 will be a good move. Maybe. Um, I hope so, because he's a fun guy, you know, but maybe we'll see if he can turn out the clock. I'm sure it's because it was a short notice, but I, I wonder if he sees, like, hey, maybe 55 is good. It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for his for his sake, I hope that he can get back on the, the winning trails, because I think he's, I mean, dude, he's a baller. He always comes to bang, and uh, his current losing streak has been kind of sad, but, you know, we'll see what happens here. Uh, I don't want to see either one of these guys lose, but at the very least, it should be a banger of a fight, so... Yeah, man. Um, overall, I like this card a lot. I like this card a whole lot. I like uh, and the UC card. You know, I felt like last week Belto was kind of lopsided over the UC, and then and in execution, I still ended up liking Belto a lot more uh, than the UC. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Uh, Angel, we do got a little bit of boxing to talk about. Um, you didn't watch the Spence fight, did you? No, I I wasn't able to. Okay. Yeah, so we won't get too much of a recap there. But regardless, Errol Smith Jr., since we did give the preview, uh, he did pick up the win over Jordanus Vugas. This is a banger of a fight. Um, he got rocked bad. I believe Spence did in round six. Um, but after that, it was all Errol Spence, dude. I mean, he just went on the attack like a monster. He broke uh, Ugas' orbital the next round, I believe. Fight gets called off in round 10 due to the broken orbital that he could not see um, out of his left eye. So, yeah, man. An absolute beast. Uh, yeah, man, we got to see the Crawford fight next. Will it happen? I don't know. Crawford is a free agent. There's no excuses. You can't blame Bob Arum. There's no, there's literally no excuses anymore. So if the fight doesn't happen, I'll I'll lose my shit. So they got to do it, dude. Uh, and Errol Spence, despite all the injuries, you know, the broken, not it wasn't broken over, excuse me, the torn retina, the car accident, the long layoffs. Everything. Still, everything. You know, he's still that fucking guy. So they got to do that fight next, man. They have to. Um, but in terms of boxing, we do have a uh, – we got a preview, and it's a big one, man. Uh, Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. And, you know, for a long time we wanted Anthony Joshua. You know, we wanted that fight to happen in the U.K. It'd be the biggest U.K. boxing match of all time. However, couldn't make it happen. Just couldn't make it happen. AJ couldn't, kept on running into complications. You know, the Usyk fight ended up happening. You know, it, it's just a whole lot, man. Instead, you know, we're getting Dillian White. And I, based off the promotion, it seems like they're kind of shifting, like, you know what? Fuck it. We, we're never going to have the AJ fight happen. Let's just position this as the biggest boxing match in British history. And they're doing a, a damn good job, dude. Uh, 93,000 fans are expected to be in attendance this one. It'll be the most attended British boxing match in the UK since like 19, I mean, since, uh, since at least World War II, I believe. Holy shit. How many fans? 93,000. Holy shit. Is it a they're women? Still try, they're still trying to expand it up to 100,000, um, but 93 is the current number. Is it in Wembley? Open up more attendance. What do you say? Is it in Wembley? Is that why? Yeah, it's in Wembley. Yeah. Holy fuck. That's bad. Yeah. Ass. Um, so it's, uh, God damn, and it, it's going to be a hell of a fight, man. I mean, Tyson Fury, obviously, we know the story. Undefeated, 31-0-1. The only person to ever put a glove on him, really, was Deontay Wilder in their amazing trilogy, one of the greatest trilogies in the history of, at the very least, heavyweight boxing, um, which he is coming off of that 11th-round knockout over Wilder in October. And sticking on Dillian White, like I mentioned, the body snatcher, he's coming off a knockout win over Alexander Povietkin in March 2021. He's supposed to fight our boy uh, Otto Valin, but that got canceled, and in and, uh, and turn now he's facing Tyson Fury, which what a what a step of a competition um, in terms of going from one guy to another. Uh, give me your thoughts on this one. Give me your prediction. 
It's a banger, man. I'm excited. I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of show these boys put on, man. Uh, I mean, it's it's, it's going to be a sick crowd. It's going to be a sick vibe. And hopefully the undercard's really fun, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on the undercard, they do have a couple of names. By a couple of names, I mean, most notable, they have Tommy Fury. That's about it. <laughs> it's just, Is Tommy actually fighting on the undercard? Tommy Fury is be fighting... Um, yeah, he's going to be fighting against Daniel Bolshowski, uh, Polish guy, 10-1. Um, At least they gave him someone with a positive record for once. Right? So it's a big step up for him. We'll see if he passes it. May not, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I mean, I'm going to go and take Tyson Fury to win. However, what I will say is uh, Dillian White... He's gonna make it close, man. I think I think he's done the right thing. He's essentially gone into the woods. Like he he literally only emerged last week to do some media. He had not made a post on social media. He hadn't done shit. He just been in like out in I, I don't know Portugal. I think he's out training in Portugal. That's his, all he's been doing, training nonstop. Uh, and Dillian White, man, he's got the power to make a difference. I don't think he'll get the win here, but I think he's gonna give him some challenges. I, th- I really think he is. So, I'm assuming you're on the same page and that you're also going to go ahead and take Fury? Oh, yeah, dude. I'm on the same page for sure. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, man. So, dude, nice, nice uh, week for combat sports. As far as uh, the show goes, as far as boxing, MMA, is there anything else you want to talk about before we close out? Uh, nothing specifically. All right. That's what I thought. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm at Josh Evan on Twitter. He's at Angel Tiger underscore 01 at Courtside Sound for all things related to the podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click.